What's up, guys, and welcome back to another Odd Popcorn for that review. I'm Chris. I'm Nick. Guys, if you're just joining us for the first time, we would love it if you hit the subscribe button below. We got videos coming out like this every week. Uh, some old, some new. This time it's a new one. This is Bottoms, directed by Emma Seligman, and uh, and I believe written by, but also starring Rachel Sennett and uh, Ayo Edebiri, among others, Ruby Cruz. Uh, and uh, I got I to gotta mention Marshawn Lynch. I don't think he's ever really done any acting right. or that I know of. But uh, anyway, yeah, uh, I really like this a lot. But I mean, it took a second to grow on me, but I really like this a lot. Um, how about yourself? What do you think about it? Yeah, I kind of had the same experience. Like uh, whenever I saw the trailer, I thought this looks pretty interesting. And, you know, it kind of took a minute for me to fall, not fall in love, but to get into it i did like it uh quite a bit after watching the whole thing it's just like that beginning part is kind of yeah. a little bit of a drag but once she gets into the like meat of the movie it's pretty good i couldn't tell if it was like just getting warmed up to the style of humor that this had or not yeah you know? and but, i haven't uh, seen the other movie that she wrote and directed uh shiva baby but i've heard good things I about love it shiva baby. okay yeah really love that movie highly recommend and I would say more so than this, although I want to give this a rewatch, um, partially because of something I'm gonna I'll mention in a second. But, uh, but yeah, I just uh, once once you get for, past that, for the 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 things with like uh, all the football guys and all the jocks and everything, it was like so over the. I know it's intentionally over the top, but it's just like so over the top and and kind of I don't know if campy is the word, but just so, really like overacting on purpose, and you, it, it was. It, it kind of took me out. You know what it kind of, like, I kept thinking while watching this movie a little bit is, like, would this be in the same universe as Bo is Afraid? Because everything is kind of, like, there's weird stuff happening in the background. Everybody's a little over the top. It well, just kind of, like, like, had that same feel to it a little bit. It, it, it's almost like the, that what, I, what I said to Heather when we got back in the car is, like, it's almost like this took place in an alternate universe where swearing like all the stigma around swearing and just being like crude and everything is just completely out the window. So like right. the teachers, everybody's t talking to kids and every, everybody's talking like however they want, even over the intercoms and everything, people are dropping F bombs. And especially like the, the guy who's announcing for the football, football game. game. Yeah. <laughs> like it, I wish I could understand more of that. It was a little, I couldn't make out everything he was saying, but uh, yeah, it, it, the movie seemed a little quiet in our theater. Did, was, did it seem like that for you? God, I wasn't even gonna mention it because I've had so many issues with sound. It, yeah, it, I, a little of the, a little bit of the dialogue. It's like it's not like I, I could make out most of it, but it just felt like maybe the mixing was weird. Where like yeah. the, like the sound, the music volume was too high or something. Right. I don't know, but uh, but yeah, and the big thing for for us too, and it doesn't have anything to do with the movie, but unfortunately it affected my experience of it is that we had people sitting right behind us who were enjoying this movie so much that they're, I mean, not only are they laughing really hard, like scream laughing at everything, but uh, they're talking through the whole thing. And I mean, not like, not like scream talking, but um, certainly talking through the whole thing. And it was pretty distracting. And I had to just like eventually just let go and, and try to enjoy the movie in spite of them and be glad that they're having a good time too. But it's just not the kind of good time that I would tend to have in public uh, Yeah, when, when you can do that other places but that that made it hard in the beginning to differentiate between like how i'm actually feeling about this movie and how i uh you know how, how much it's skewed by this experience but uh but i did end up definitely liking it a lot and uh the humor really grew on me is the biggest thing mm -hmm. uh and man rachel said it i know she kind of wrote herself as a character who's kind of unlikable but uh i thought she was the biggest standout here but really really close second is uh io edibiri mm-hmm who uh, I didn't really, if I didn't know it, I wouldn't, I don't think I would recognize from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles doing the voice there, but. Of April O'Neil, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, what are some things that stood out to you about this? I'm, I'm uh, Just like all the little, yeah. like I was saying, how it kind of reminded me of Bo's Afraid, like little subtle things, like the drawings on the chalkboard, or like stuff that was written, like on their, their lockers. Like one time there's a poster that was kind of funny because it definitely reminds you of retail. It's, it says something like, uh, always be smiling you never know if he's gonna be or you look better with a smile on he may be watching you and it's like something people tell people in retail but there's like there's a, a, a scene yeah. in um 
the classroom where there's just a dude in a cage. Yeah. And yeah. I, not, it's just not mentioned. And it's pretty. <laughs> there's a lot of funny little things in the background happening throughout the movie that added to it, I feel like. And if you, I mean, if you don't know, you know, the, the essential story is like these girls just kind of, kind of stumble into making a fight club, like an all girls fight club as, as, under the guise of like a self defense club. And, and Marshall, their, ten- their teacher's played by Marshawn Lynch, Mr. G. And uh, he kind of takes over the, what's the role called? I don't know, like supervisor role. Yeah, I think so. Of the club or whatever. By the way, I heard all of his, like, just about all of his lines are improvised. Really? So yeah. that's kind of funny because you said you hadn't seen him in anything, and I have, but it was like an improv- improvisational show. It was uh, Murder Town on Netflix where oh. it's uh, Will Arnett, and each week he has a guest, and the guest doesn't have a script, but like everything else is kind of semi scripted. But it's, that's and he was really good on the there. script. Well, he was yeah, really yeah. good on the Murder Town as well, so it was kind of funny to see him in this. Man, and it was great to see maybe. a uh, a blooper reel at the end of this. I thought yeah. that added a lot to it. And it just, I just, at some point, the the comedy of it and the humor of it and the the camaraderie between the different uh, characters in this club and everything just really clicked for me. And it's kind of like, you know, it it, it halfway is, is trying to be like a story about how like all of these girls ended up in this, you know, they started this club just to basically get laid. Yeah, you know, they just wanted to lose their virginity. These two, these two uh, lesbian girls. But like, they kind of all end up finding things along the way, friendship and a, and a safe space to confide in people, and and you know, kind of a whatever. And the only one who's kind of not happy with what they've gotten out of this is Rachel Sennett's character. I'm lo- I'm losing her name. What's, PJ? what's her name in them? Is that it? I think it's PJ. PJ, yeah. Oh, by the end stick. But uh, but yeah, PJ is the one character that kind of is is having a hard time learning her lesson, and it, it gave me vibes. It's not the same movie by any means, but it gave me a little bit of like super bad vibes, where yeah, I could see that. Like just because of that, like like lesson learning type of arc, and it, and it's kind of a coming of age thing, and it's kind of like a one last hurrah. It's not quite like a one last party before high school ends kind of thing, but uh. But yeah, it's it's kind of that kind of thing, just because it's it's a high school comedy and people talk a little bit more like they talk in real life, which which mm-hmm. was was the thing that kind of set super bad apart. So, not to draw too many parallels, they're really not the same movie at all. But uh, but just that 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 main friendship and everything kind of reminded me of those two. Um, and I I did like yeah. Ruby Cruz's character quite a bit too. It's like she doesn't understand what sarcasm is, so ev- she just takes everything that's said to her extremely literally. Man, you end up feeling so bad for her at some points. In this. Yeah, you really uh, do. Like there, I mean, I guess there's a there's a couple things I won't wouldn't spoil, but there's there's a couple main scenes where uh, she just can't kind of can't catch a break, and especially there's like a pinnacle scene with uh, with her and PJ, uh, where PJ's just being real cruel to her for no reason. So uh, yeah, <laughs> one of the one of the chatty girls behind me was like was like, oh poor. What's her, what's her name in the poor, Hazel. Like, poor Hazel she's really cute <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there for uh, so long just like I recognized her and I could not for the life of me remember what I had seen her in what it was the Willow TV show oh I did not watch that she yeah. doesn't, it doesn't look like she's been on much yeah but yeah overall I certainly highly recommend this I want to <laughs> I want to rewatch it at home yeah you should alone <laughs> it's a it's it's like a fresh take on a high school comedy it's it's new yeah. and like there's enough in it that it's uh different and pretty good and i and i think it targets like uh you know not not necessarily a niche audience but like this isn't the um you know it's kind of a little more for the alternative crowd or like i think people who who uh you know who identify different ways or have different sexual orientations and things like this mm-hmm. can get a lot out of this because it's sort of it's a very inclusive movie and everything so yeah uh, what would you give it what's your number I'd probably give it like a seven. It's pretty for a comedy. It was pretty good for a lot that's been coming out recently. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we have some to catch up on, I guess. You know. Yeah. But we'll see. But uh, yeah, it, I have to give it like a tentative score. I would also give it a seven, but I think on rewatch it might grow on me even more. I think it could it could be an eight. Yeah. In the future, so we'll we'll see how it goes. But uh, for now, I'd give it I'd give it a seven as well. But yeah, definitely recommend it. This is definitely something if you want a comedy to see in theaters. You know, to, just based on what I've seen throughout the year and and seen trailers for and everything, this looks like 
like the best one of the year, really. I mean, I can't mm -hmm. think of a unless you count like something like Dungeons and Dragons as a as a comedy, but it's just kind of that's one of the boxes it ticks. So yeah. But yeah, uh, so the next thing we're watching uh, is I can't remember off off the top of my head what the anniversary is, but we're we're coming up on an anniversary of the movie Perfect Blue. So that's the next movie we're talking about. Uh, if you've seen this movie Bottoms, uh, make sure to comment below. Let us know how you felt about it, and uh, yeah, and uh, hit the like button below. Share this with your friends, and yeah, we appreciate you watching as always, guys, very much. And we'll see you in the next one. We'll see you.